Alright, hello everyone and welcome to session four of the Star Trek and Good game. Uh, I don't really have much in the way of announcements except for one. Uh, if you have uh, time this coming Sunday at 9 p.m., my newest Star Trek Adventures game, the Groundskeepers game, is launching. Uh, it is an all Undine or an all species 8472 game. So if you're interested, give it a check out. It'll be right here on this channel at 9 p.m. Eastern. But uh, with that said, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, and then we'll run the intro. Um, oh, okay. My name is Greater Gerardo, and I'm playing Captain Caetano Deca. Uh, my name is Drone, and I'm playing First Officer Commander Sovak. I, I am Talon. I play Lieutenant Talcafad, the science officer, who also makes great souffles. Hmm. I am Ben. I am playing Lieutenant Junior Grade uh, Ash the Canner, Security Chief. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and run that intro. Alright, and welcome back. So, something I love doing for my Star Trek games is have the players do an opening log. And today we have a supplemental from our good First Officer. So, Mr. Savak, if you would take it away. First Officer's log supplemental. Things have gotten somewhat complicated. After arriving in system on our mission to passively study a pre-war civilization on the moon we now know as Jindar... The Gangut responded to a distress call from a small pre-warp craft in orbit of Jindar's primary gas giant. With little choice due to the ramshackle design of the pilot ship, the Gangut brought the being known as Tomalor on board. Since then, we have had the chance to learn a bit more about the inhabitants of this system, and unfortunate incidents have resulted in our guest being placed in confinement after an act of desperation on her part. Per information from Tomalor, her species, known as the Pochai, and one of two native to the moon of Jindar, functions as a sort of slave caste to the dominant Modar. This places us in a very difficult moral quandary. The Prime Directive stands, but slavery is an institution that the Federation cannot tolerate. Alrighty. So our first scene is going to be a little bit ahead of where we left off last time. Uh, your, I guess you would call them prisoner now. Uh, is being confined in the shuttle bay for the current moment. Um, but basically, all of you have traveled to a briefing room or a meeting room nearby to discuss where you go from here. And I'm going to let you guys take it from here. So we're in quite an interesting spot, are we not? That's... Uh... That's a nice way to put it, Darkath. We could be in a worse situation. She could actually have one of the... Uh, uh, she could actually have a weapon or a hostage. Lieutenant the Canner, I trust you stationed ample guards outside of the shuttle bay. Mm. Good. There's uh, cameras and uh, I believe she's uh, still unconscious, but... Uh, we uh, we are waiting for any sign. Uh, are the repairs continuing their 
are the repairs being made in the same shadow hangar as it was? They are, yeah. Is there an is there an argument that we can make that the scientific data that we can scan the scientific data we scanned is probably insufficient and that we can be able to go go plant side because in my in my experience the numbers can only paint so much of a picture it is by only going down to the planet that we can learn more about what's going on but but that's the that's our conundrum we can never be sure the way the way i see it we are already in direct violation of the prime directive and we either can take the posture of completely disregarding it and trying our best to improve the situation or we can try to mitigate the damage we've made and cut our losses. I mean, the way I mean, the way that, that I see it, we've already made damage by rescuing, by rescuing her and bringing her aboard the ship. Exactly. We mm. need to mitigate that in some way. I mean, there's not exactly much to mitigate to mitigate after that. Yeah, the focus should be on preventing the situation from getting even more contaminated than it is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I don't think going down to the planet achieves that. Mm -mm. Unless you have a, a plan going forward with that. I mean, the plan is as long as we as long as we have an away team that doesn't get seen, we'll be we can at least observe for ourselves, grab grab some more viable samples, bring them back to the ship, have them analyzed, put it underneath the guise of a of a scientific expedition, and then go from there. Uh, just real quick, out of character for me, which what samples are we talking about getting? I mean, I mean, I'm just if we were talking about samples, just like soil samples, just like standard stuff for a new planet, just soils, vegetation, that sort of stuff. Does mm. how does how does that help us with solving her problem, though? I mean, we would go. I mean, put it this way, we would go. We would be able to go down there. We would be able to see plants like what is happening. Mm. All the while, it's under the guise of a scientific expedition. Two yes, birds with one stone, as it were. Mm. We can... That's a good suggestion, Lieutenant. If they were not already so active in their first steps towards space domination. N not domination, but space, space exploration. Sparing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. The, the thing is, this, these people, apparently, they've just launched the, their last attempt at a makeshift in this makeshift craft that ended up with this stranger in our ship. So they will be looking at the skies. They will be searching the planet. And I'm not sure we can hide from them. At least not and reach the planet. There's also the practical matter to consider, Captain, and Sovak looks around the room and says, some of us are taller than others, but uh, I don't think any of us comes near the size of the Pochai. Impersonating one of them might be difficult. Mm. And we don't know what the, uh, what the mode are. Well, it's not so much impersonation as it is we just don't get seen. We stay low. And we do it we on do? we do it on the cover of night. We do it on the cover of night. We land a sizable distance away from whatever the main hub of civilization is. Well, Lieutenant. Unfortunately, I can understand your your interest, your curiosity 
towards this new planet and wanting to conclude this mission, but I don't think it's justified to risk further endangering our violation of the Prime Directive to try and get some soil samples. I believe we have to content ourselves with the long range scanners. Is there a way to uh, send a send something down to the actual planet, like an unmanned drone, take uh, readings and samples that way, and then just retrieve it? That way, we're not. That way, we are out. We just send something down, set it for a specific amount of time, and then bring it back without. Then it's worse because. A man can die and they only learn physiology, anatomy. But the way you're putting it, we're sending a probe, which is technology. And that's a greater violation. Maybe not so much a greater violation. If our new friend is all willing to lens, willing to part with some of their parts and we, we meld with very little bits of our technology it it could we could we could have it be perceived as just one of their one of their probes that would require that our guest uh be a little forthcoming and willing to help and i don't believe that is the case after her outburst in the shuttle bay not at this point anyway and what and shall we, we have do to about her anyways exactly we need to discuss the matter of our guest. How do we how do we approach the situation? Suggestions. So there's two options. We send we just send her back and risk maybe her probably dying. Or there's also the other option, we find out what ability she has. And if and if the abilities are good enough, we recruit her to work with us. Sovak has oh, like should. a like a clipboard in front of him, and he's he's concurring with with this estimation. He says uh, the prime directive is, as you know, Captain, notoriously vague. Um, however, there is precedent for uh, returning Tamalor to her species, provided she provides us with certain assurances that she uh, keeps information confidential. Um, and then there is also precedence for granting her asylum in the Federation on the caveat uh, that she can never return to her world. Those out of are... character. Um, did Was it just that you said that we had, that uh, she would get experimented on, or did she actually tell us that she would get experimented on? She actually said that. Okay. Uh, I would not feel comfortable sending her back at all. Either we take her to a planet where she can integrate with the other species, or we take her with us because sending her back would, probably, would be essentially a death sentence. Okay, I, I think granting asylum would probably be best. Who knows? Maybe if maybe if she has some pretty good qualifications, we could we could use her aboard the ship. Um, <clears throat> from my interactions with our guest, what I. What I sensed, what she gave me away, was that she was not that inclined to leave her race and leave her people. So I believe we cannot give the, her the choice to go back. What this means is that she will not be friendly towards us and We are in a dangerous situation because if she manages to, to grant asylum with us, we need to trust her. And provided that we do, she has to trust us back and not try to steal a shuttle and go back to her planet. If we leave her somewhere, it's the same ordeal. Whenever she manages to get, a, get her hands on sh some shuttles, she will do the same. 
And if the planet doesn't have any spacefaring technology, we're inflicting the prime directive yet again. So unfortunately as it is, I think the situation is sending her back to her planet. Captain, if I may, uh, we, we haven't discussed these options with her. Um, and I think at, at any rate, whatever choice she does make, it's, it's a difficult decision in either direction, but I think she should be free to make that choice once she understands the options. A life yes, of... we shouldn't we shouldn't rob her of we shouldn't rob her of her own decision either returning to a life of slavery or asylum in the federation that uh may be monitored because um she would need to prove that she could be trusted how uh, how would you guys how what would uh what would your stances be on having her be a preliminary ambassador of sorts, uh, give, uh, relay, uh, get, gaining information about her species and the Modar, and possibly setting up a way to monitor the system. And should, uh, should they reach a point where it would be acceptable to interact with the species again? It is a very interesting idea, Lieutenant. Uh, treating Tomalor as sort of a an agent for change on her world, as it were. Um, it seems that's that's where her passions lie uh, to begin with, in in freeing her people and no longer being a slave. But are we are we interfering with curse of history? Because before we interacted with her, Molar would never have reached her planetary area again. And for all we know, she may never have truly questioned her status as a slave before she saw what life can be like with, with a different sort of outlook. Uh, I believe they, there was that she did mention that they were unhappy with their lot in oh, life. Okay. So she's already been questioning it. As for the course of history, if we hadn't saved the probe uh, number twelve, I believe it was, she, it would have it would have hit the planet, and there would have been nothing left. As it is now, it's almost the same. There's just no there are no traces of her or the probe. If we want to keep things the similar, we send the probe into a decaying orbit without any further. Uh, repairs from ourselves and, what about and, her? and if she's amenable we can take her with us I'd rather okay. not kill her or send her back of course not this is, we're the federation we cannot do that so the way I see it Commander Savak is completely correct in that we need to give her the choice. I think giving uh, her the choice will probably be best. And I think it, it will probably be better coming from your mouth, Captain, than it probably is from any of us. But we need a plan for a choice. The first choice would be grant her asylum in this federation and here which, with us. In which case, then we would have to at least send some advance notice to the federation backwards. Um, exactly. So, the Kenner, can you please prepare that once this meeting is over? I can. Um, out of character, ELH, how far are we from the nearest star base? Like, are we in deep, deep space now? I mean, by TOS standards, I guess it would technically be deep space. But in the grand scheme of things, you're maybe week, week and a half away at maximum warps. So you're not that far out there. So, so we would be able to to give her the choice, like, yeah, we can give you asylum and take you back to to a place where you can be comfortable and not necessarily stay on this ship. Correct. So I would I would think a star base would be be better equipped to to handle something like this. They have counselors and cultural advisors and mm -hmm. things that maybe make the integration a little bit better. And how long would the message take to 
Uh, the Saturday. message will probably get back to you. Like, it'll probably take maybe two, three days to get there, two, three days back. So you're looking about a week just to get back and forth. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but uh, if that wasn't enough, uh, Thakaner, you get a chirp on your comm badge. Hello? Yeah, sir, this is uh, security down in the uh, shuttle bay at the moment. Uh, you wanted to know when the prisoner awoke? I, I presume she's awake now? Very much so. Has she been seen to by medical? Medical says that she is fine. Okay. Thank you. And uh, we will likely be down there in in a short time. Very good, sir. So let's try to wrap this up. Then I'll go see our guest. If we send her to the planet, what can we do to guarantee that she will not die instantly? Perhaps we can speak with, uh, with Dr. Okoro about slightly altering her appearance so that she could maybe pass undetected as herself. Only if she would be able to give our word, give her word that she wouldn't relay the information because the moment she starts speaking, then there goes that. I would also posit that it is a possibility that the moment she starts speaking, she would effectively seal her own death sentence anyway. If what we understand about the Modar is true, they would dissect her then either way. Then I believe we we should be settled. We can give her the option of returning to, the, to her home or not. And if she doesn't want to return, we either give her passage to another world far enough or Grand Terra's Island in the Federation. Unless you have other suggestions before we go down to... Nope. <sighs> Let's go there, Lieutenant. So let me get uh, everyone's tokens set up here. Uh, is it just going to be the captain and the canner, or is Sova coming along for the ride as well? Up to the captain. I'd say it's up to you, Sovak. We're we're not in a dangerous situation at the moment. The ship is stable, and I believe some of the other senior officer can, officers can stay on the bridge. Then I will come along. We will be close. So, uh, you all make a quick trip to the shuttle bay and uh, sort of a good news, bad news situation. The good news is that Tomalor's craft has been fully repaired at this point. Uh, Slal has more or less left it where it came in and has returned to uh, her main engineering to deal with problems there. But uh, conceivably, you could send Tomalor out at any moment. And Tom Lore herself is sort of against one of the walls, just sort of leaning against it, uh, with probably about four or five security officers just forming a semicircle around her, you know, preventing her from just running up and grabbing someone, that sort of thing. Um, but as you come in, uh, pretty much everyone looks in your direction, Captain. As you were. Um... Uh, hello, Tamilar. How are you feeling? Not great, but I suppose that's to be expected. Why do you believe that? I mean, you have such advanced weaponry that I'm sure you could have vaporized me or something to that effect. As I have said before, that not that's not how we operate. So I came here with a proposition to you in hopes of solving the situation that we're in. From what you've told us, if you return to your planet, 
you'll be prodded and poked. And you will not survive after multiple procedures they will do to understand the situation that you're in. So, I believe I can offer you a choice. You can either return back to your planet and we'll try to make sure that you don't get recognized. Or you become an exile from your planet and we grant you asylum with us in the Federation. I'm sure we can provide you with facilities, a world somewhere where you can live, thrive, and be happy away from your problems. So let me see if I understand my options correctly. I can either go back to the planet and end up a science experiment, or I will be taken away and plop down somewhere that I can't do any damage. Do I have that correct? The parts of the science experiment is not, it's not our fault. We can, however, try to mitigate that and make you unconspicuous. But if you ever let, let anyone know of this situation, of this, of what happened to you, then you might have an issue because they would recognize you then. And uh, she sort of scoffs and, you know, folds her arms across her chest and says, you know, as much as you say this isn't how you do things, I'm getting the sense that I am being given an ultimatum. I can either die or I can turn a blind eye to the fact that there's a better way of existing and make it so I have to live with being a slave for the rest of my life, that my people remain slaves for the rest of their lives. So my choice is death. Or dooming my people. Well, frankly, Captain, you can go fuck yourself. And let me make something very clear. If you do try to take me away from here, I will do everything in my power to one day get back to this planet. You will literally have to throw me in whatever your equivalent of a prison is. And you better be damn sure that that prison can hold me. So your choice is to go back to your planet. Yes, my choice is that you're giving me is death. How do you propose we handle this situation then? Well, you give me that shuttle over there, pointing at one of the uh, you know, standard Federation shuttles. You let me take out the individuals responsible for perpetuating the slavery. And you let my people settle things on their own. I mean, what's the point of having technology like this if you can't use it for the better good? The issue with the better good is that it's always relative. I There's... fail to see how slavery is relative at all. The issue is not slavery, because that is completely wrong. The issue is us leaking technology to people that could not be ready. The way I see it, we cannot grant you the shuttle. What we can do is try to make you unconspicuous, change our appearance somehow, and then send you back to your, to your planet where you can try to achieve your revolution through whatever means you find acceptable then. I'm offering you a way out. I'm not going to give you our technology. You can fight your battles for yourselves. And uh, she actually sort of narrows her eyes, but instead of saying anything, uh, she actually sort of goes down the wall and sits down cross-legged, arms still across her chest, and says, well, you're not sending me back either. I refuse to be sent to my death, and I refuse any and all medical treatment that would let you gloss over the problem that you face. So basically, if it wasn't clear, you're in a further pickle now. 
Yes. Very well, Tamlor. We'll discuss how we'll do, we we will deal with the, with your situation now that you're uncooperative. If you want our cooperation, you have to offer cooperation back. At this point, I think Tomlor would actually start like looking away from you or doing everything in her power to show that she's not listening to you at this point. You know, she is basically tuning you out. And well, that was my exit line either way. Mm -hmm. All right. So my question is, are you going back to the meeting room or are you just like going to go out <laughs> to the corridor and, you know, have a conversation out there? Yeah. Let's go to the turbo lift. Very cramped turbo lift, but sure, we can go to the turbo lift. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're going to depower it uh, as soon as it starts moving. And stop, yeah. It's getting hot here. I'm going to unbutton my uniform. <laughs> I, uh, it seems I actually don't have a turbo lift, so we're just going to go ahead and use the corridor map because that's what I do have. All right, so uh, Savak, you're there. Thakaner, you're there. Captain, you're there. And yeah, uh, go ahead and uh, discuss the situation <sighs> as such as it is. So, gentlemen, she forced our hand. Captain, as much as it pains me to say something like this, um, it may be that we have to force the issue. What do you mean? If she will not willingly leave, uh, go back to her planet, which is understandable, and she will not willingly accept asylum, and in this case, if she does not want it, the Federation may not grant it. Yes, of course. No, we can. We cannot take an uncooperative individual and integrate them in, into our society. Yeah, and at that, Sovak just sort of trails off. It's a very, it's a very difficult thing for him to to sort of conceptualize in his mind too. The only other option available to us would be, um, as you mentioned, and as she refused, a medical intervention of sorts. We could attempt to have the doctor erase parts of her memory, or there are other methods to do so. Um, However, she is very much not into that idea. So this would be against her will which also violates regulations. Yes, I hope we don't have such a doctor aboard this ship. I don't believe any medical professional would be agreeable to it, but mm -hmm. if this was something that she was agreeing to and we could guarantee that there were no after effects, that'd be one thing, but she doesn't want it. I, I was hoping she'd be willing to come with us and find a way to make things better using I don't I don't see a way out of this not a not not one that has everybody happy I be yeah. the, the only thing I'm seeing is an end where nobody's happy. Offering her the solution then uh, of another option, uh, and it is not the best option, but it is perhaps the least bad uh, in, in helping her to forget the experiences of the last day. Um, then it would be a task of selling that challenge, uh, a challenge to, uh, to sell that idea to her. It has the least impact on her as an individual. She returns to her world as if she never met us. It has the least impact on the Prime Directive. She will forget everything she saw on this planet, on this on this ship. Unless the uh, unless I the didn't. moon has been able to record her disappearing. I believe either way. She will be she will be experimented on even if she doesn't recall us. This is a tough situation, but we needed to talk to our science officer. I believe 
we, we can wait on this facet of action. And why we need a plan, a plan B. If she's unwilling to cooperate and we will not uh, go against our regulations of not doing procedures on people against their will, then I, be, I believe our only option is to sadly put her back on the course of the K. And since I find it interesting, let's say for sake of argument that your turbo lift has actually brought you to sick bay because I figure that's where you were headed anyway um, to discuss this option with the chief medical officer. And uh, this is actually the first time we are seeing our CMO. Um, so who made uh, Dr. Nadami Okoro? I did. Okay. Why don't you uh, Why don't you tell us a little bit about them? And uh, I'll try not to have you talk to yourself, but uh, I think it would be interesting if you actually played them in this scene. Sure. Um, actually, did I write anything down about him? I don't think I did, so I'm gonna make it up on the fly. Nope, I didn't. Um, yeah. So he he specializes in xenobiology and infectious diseases. Um, he's he's sort of your standard frontier doctor. Um, jovial, I would say. Uh, maybe informal. For, for somebody of his station as chief medical officer. Mm -hmm. Sort of young. He's not like a not like a Dr. McCoy old dude. Um, but he's he's experienced too. Okay. So yeah, doctor, you're uh just sort of doing your rounds, not a whole lot of injuries or diseases or infections going around, so sick is pretty much empty, but in walks uh, the captain, the canner, and commander Silvak. Oh, uh, Captain, Commander, Lieutenant, uh, it's it's not time for your physicals, and I haven't seen you guys in sick bay before. Uh, when it's not time for a physical, so uh, what uh, what can I do you for? We'd actually like to discuss some options with you. Options about what? Wait a second, Doctor. I believe there's someone else that should be in this this discussion. Captain to Lieutenant Talketh Ad, are you in any way available? Yes, I am. Can you report to Sick Bay, please? Yes, I will report to Sick Bay. Thank you, Lieutenant. And of course, a dramatically appropriate amount of time passes, and Talketh joins the conversation. And he put chocolate in it. Chocolate? Can you believe? Chocolate oh. in a souffle, Captain. That's I have to talk to Lieutenant Cal uh, talk out. That that's not something that can fly. I have a recipe. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> oh, Lieutenant, I didn't see you coming in. Uh, uh, so how's our how's how's our how's our guest doing? Unwilling and uncooperative. Uncooperative. Okay. And yes. I assume she was un unreceptive to either of our options. Every single one of them. Oh, okay. And now she's throwing kind of a tantrum on our shadow bay. So okay. I gathered you here because I believe we have to discuss the option of performing some magical operations without our consent. What are we, what kind of operations are we asking here? Is there a way of possibly erasing her memory of the last day, at least for some time? The doctor uh, sort of like has to digest what you're asking of him and he sort of lets out a big old like a big old whew, like a, that like is... a sigh yeah <laughs> and and sort of leans up against a bio bed and crosses his arms and says uh captain what you're asking is medically possible but ethically i, I cannot do something like this without the consent of the patient and actually to add on to that uh, i would like dr okoro and tall Kath, you can assist on this Okay. Uh, I would like a insight medicine difficulty of three 
your xenobiology focus would apply here. And then and one one d twenty for assisting, right? Correct. Okay. Do we have uh no? It was all of our momentum reset, didn't it? No. Uh, since we did do a uh, split episode, you actually have three at the uh, moment. Unfortunately, I got nothing on that, so I rolled uh, just above. I'm gonna tap one of your momentum then, uh, Talkath, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna say you still succeed here, but there is a complication. So there's good news and bad news. Which would you like first? Just the bad news first. Bad news is if the scans of Tom Laura are correct, uh, her species does not store memory in a way that traditional species do. Um, and of course, someone who actually has medical knowledge is going to tear me apart from this. Um, but if I remember my biology courses in real life correctly, um, the way that we store memories is sort of chemical based. Wherein, yeah, if you were to flood the system with a certain amount of, of chemical, you could wipe out the memories, you could, you know, reset, quote unquote, the neurons and all the connections. The problem is Tom Lore's species does something completely different, wherein in order to, quote unquote, erase her memories, you would have to wipe out everything. And I mean everything. You would literally be reducing her to a toddler having to relearn everything what about some sort of cybernet what about some sort of implant that constitutes memory suppression you would run into the same sort of problem where because of the unique biology of the species you would eventually run into the problem where they would start remembering um what about and this is me me asking as a player not as the doctor i mean mm -hmm. this is something the doctor should hopefully know but what about a mind meld that you don't know, but that is an option. Mm. But I would say out of character that a mind meld doesn't necessarily impose your viewpoint on the person you're doing it. And I would say it would actually maybe be harmful when it comes to Sovak because Sovak would be getting Tomalor's experiences back through the mind meld. On the other hand, Sovak would just be imparting his understanding of why the Federation has this policy and why things are this way. So the understanding would go both ways. Correct. And then it would, we would have to decide, like, is the goal of that for me to somehow psychically try to remove a day of her memory or just make her understand? Mm -hmm. And I, by me, I mean Sovak, not the doctor, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, what was, was what was the good news? <laughs> if that was the bad news. <laughs> Good oh, news that's... is uh, everyone here has already done their physical, so you don't have to, you know, <laughs> get them to come back. And... Well, the, well the put it this is... way: we do, we do okay, know so... that it is possible, but we will be reducing her to a vegetable at that state. Mm -hmm. That's what we know. It'd be one yeah. thing if we were able to reduce her physically as well, in which case it would just be wiping her slate completely clean. And dropping her off, but this would be an abs this would be a this would be evidence of somebody tampering with her if she had no memories. And was her current size. It would effectively lobotomize the patient. And then that's not something even that I would do to a willing patient. Not acceptable. <laughs> not acceptable at all. So we cannot erase our memory so we cannot run away from this problem. Doctor, do you believe it's surgically possible to change your appearance somehow? Should I roll for that or is it just... I mean, even surgery? in the TOS era that we're playing in, you could easily, you know, do prosthetics. You could do a little bit of surgery to fix them up, but it's not going to change who they are is what i would say like yeah physical appearance wise they'll look different but mentally eh -eh. oh yes okay Phys physical appearance yeah so then how willing would you be to perform this operation on an unwilling patient Doctor. The doctor crosses his arms again and says, if I don't have the forms signed and sealed from this patient, uh, I'm, I'm not moving an inch, and neither is another one of my staff, sir. 
I do not have those kinds of, I do not have those kinds of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Preclusions. I would be willing to do it. I believe you're not even a doctor, Talcath. But I have experience in medical procedures. <laughs> That's... Captain, uh, I wouldn't allow this in my sick bay. I hear your pleas, Namji. Don't, don't worry. But then we, I, we have no other choice. We have to kill this person. That I would not be so willing to do. Uh, Sovak just goes, <clears throat> Captain, <laughs> kind of surprised. So is everyone paying attention now? So we have little options. I'm not saying that this is an ethical struggle, ethical struggle that we need to figure out how to not get tainted. We will be either way we already are. We need to figure out a way to reduce the damage we cause. One thing I would say out of character is I think the doctor maybe would have mentioned the mind meld possibility, but again, Sovak would have to be consenting and possibly doing it against an unwilling subject. Yeah, I, th I think he would have brought that up and said, "This there are surgical options, but there are also psychological options." And then he just looks at at Sovak. Mm -hmm. And how does Sovak respond? And you you respond to me, please. No, don't <laughs> uh, uh, don't respond to the doctor, please. Um, Sovak is going to pull the captain into the doctor's office, if that's all right with you. Sure. Um, out of earshot of everybody else. It's it's a very private matter, Captain. I would prefer to discuss this with you in, in private. Um, Captain, as you know, the, the mind meld is not something that my people do lightly. Uh, what the doctor says is true. Um, it could be build a bridge between us and, and Tomalor via the mind meld. And it is possible to do on an unwilling subject, though it is extremely taxing for both. It is an option that I'm willing to do if it is the best solution. However, you should also know that it is not without its own risks. Uh, understand. Not only would she gain a certain understanding for, for our culture and our values, um, she could potentially gain even more information about our society that could further damage the Prime Directive. That is a dangerous possibility. However, I, I... In my estimation, sir, if you see this as the, the appropriate course of action, there are things that I can do to limit the exchange um, to make it as minimal as possible. How can we help you? Uh, you get out of character, you got any candles? No. Uh, <laughs> um, the subject would ideally be... be uh, be willing to do this. As I mentioned, I can do it to an unwilling subject. It's it's uh, much more taxing on me to do so, and I may need the doctor's assistance afterwards. Um, may need several days in sickbay. Um, if she is willing, it's, it's much more simple. The one thing I would add, and this is sort of straying into another ethical quandary, um, and I think this is actually brought up in Star Trek as a series a few times, Wherein, if you're doing a mind meld on an unwilling subject, some people might consider that an act of assault, mm -hmm. if you get mm -hmm. my meaning. Yeah, that, that's why I pulled him into private. It's something that we can do. It's something that we do not do, mm -hmm. generally. Um, yeah. I have to go AFK for two seconds, sorry. Yeah, go for it. No worry. And I believe if I manage to somehow change your view, soften the situation, make her more willing to cooperate, I 
think they'll probably. Uh, they're out of the uh, doctor's office now, right? I would assume so. I think that conversation, you know, they've they finished up their sidebar and they've returned to the main part of sick bay. Okay. Captain, uh, I may have a train of thought that we can attempt to follow. I'm accepting any any and all suggestions at this point. Uh, well, we know that her main issue is that she doesn't want her people to continue being subjected to, to slavery. So what if instead of offering her or instead of following through on her demands of technology, if we're able to convince her of our of, of, of going back and accepting the medical uh, procedure to change her appearance, could we offer her uh tactics and uh, ways of rebelling that have succeeded in pasts from other uh, uh, species. Do you, do do you have knowledge that? of so, such tactics? tactics? And isn't that also violation of the prime directive? It's not technology that we're offering her. It's a perspective change, as it were. We are offering her an idea of Maybe uh, instead of going at things straightforward, coming at them from the side. Maybe, maybe that maybe all she needs is a different perspective to help uh, lead her people to freedom. That would also require us to get more intimate with with the social structure down on the planet, then. The issue with that is that we're still seeding knowledge and information. And I'm sorry, but that's that's a big violation. However, it's not like we have much choice. So first things first, we need to cater to convince to anything. To, to agree to something, something, whatever. We need her to agree to some option because if she agrees, then I believe it's a little bit less ethically tainted. Then that leaves it up to a negotiation. Mm -hmm. We know where her red lines are. She knows where ours are. Now we must compromise. What can we compromise without? Something that to her would seem like a big step, but could actually not be. All I had was an idea of the rebellions of peaceful ways of, do, of ch causing change. Yeah, giving her nonviolent examples of how, I mean, the Federation has dozens of, of worlds uh, of species and sort of showing how they've all come to it in a peaceful way. Except humanity, we had that whole World War Three thing. But. <laughs> and let, let's not include any uh, information on the uh, Klingons. Mm. So, Fekaner, can you please assemble a report with the, with that information? I can do that. Uh, and is there anything you'd like me to specifically include or exclude? Yeah, please restrain tactics prior to her technology advancement. All right. Uh, I'm going to need some uh, time to make sure I gather the information and it's uh, accurate. 
in, and in such a way that we can present it to her. All right. So what is sort of out of character here? Because I think you guys are going in circles a little bit. What is your course of action moving forward here? Let's decide on that and be definitive about it. We should discuss with her and try to come to a compromise. This is a negotiation now. I, I think if we say what you want, which is a shuttle with weapons, is out of the question for us. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that you coming with us peacefully and being sent back as it is, is out of the question for you. Help us solve this problem. Here is a solution that we that we thought of, or a few solutions that we thought of. One is giving her this peaceful, uh, sort of like a like a primer, basically, on, on how she can change society herself. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one is offering her the chance to gain more understanding about why we make this decision via the mind meld. Mm -hmm. um, and then hoping that she changes her mind, unless we have any other like ideas, or you know we we send her back with cosmetic surgery and she just agrees mm -hmm. to be quiet. Okay. So let's uh, let's move forward with that in mind. Uh, so we're going to journey back to the sick bay or not sick bay shuttle bay, and uh, Thakanar, I think you're actually not there because you're making a report. So I'll put in mm -hmm. Talcath instead. Uh, but do I need to still... make a roll for that report? Ah, uh, no, I, it's fairly easy for you to, you know, roll do for that sort of thing. Roll for paperwork. <laughs> roll for history checks. Roll for roll to do paperwork. But uh, yeah, so you return to the shuttle bay, and so you don't have to repeat yourself. You give her these options, and uh, Tomalor sort of latches onto that mind meld idea, and she says. Uh, what would this mind meld entail? Uh, so Sovak steps forward and, and says, it is uh, a union of understanding. You would understand things about me. I would understand things about you. And uh, it can often be an effective means of communication when words fail us, as they seem to be failing us now. Is it painful? Oh, no. It's it's actually quite uh, relaxing. It's only painful when the the parties don't agree to do it. Then I'm okay with trying this. I want to use my spirit of discovery to spend my determination. Okay. And add three momentum to the pool. Okay. So you guys okay. are at uh, five momentum by my count. Yes. Which is probably a good thing, because Mr. Silvok, in order to do a mind meld, this is going to be a control and a command. So actually your best stat. Uh, <laughs> so a control command, difficulty of four. Can I challenge a deter or a, a a value to use a determination. How, sorry, how does the determination work again? One more time. Can you be a sure. quick note on that? So basically, you always start each session or each adventure with one determination, and in order mm -hmm. to use that determination, you have to apply a value uh, to the current situation, the task you're performing. Um, now, if you challenge a value, meaning that you cross out the value and replace it at the end of the session, then you get a point of determination. And you can store up to three points of determination at any one given time. Got it. So I could I could challenge a value and get two points now. And can I use the two points immediately? You can. Um, the caveat to that is, is you would spend one before the roll to get the two free successes. And then after the roll, you would spend the second one to re-roll any dice you didn't like. That's only if I want to, though. Like Correct. If Okay. Um, then I'll just use my free determination then to add the two successes now, the one that okay. I already have. Um, and then let's see. I believe would... I have to choose a value to. Yeah, yeah I, I have one in mind here. I, I have one in mind. I was I was thinking about using look before you leap because um, this this sort of goes against the the sort of cautious nature. It's it's a mind meld is not something done, you know, just because. Uh -huh. um, but I'm oh, I'm not needing to challenge that right now okay so i'll spend my determination to get the two free successes first mm -hmm. and you said control right control and command correct 
My two best ones. Um, I'm going to burn a momentum. Uh, it would be two because the determination die counts as a die already on the table. So it would be two momentum for a okay. third die. And the captain generated three just now? Yes. So you are at okay. five. So you would go down to three. Okay. Um, and does cultural studies as a focus work? Uh, I would say negotiation would actually fit better. But yes, you would have a focus. Okay. Here we go. Uh, well, let me read the text to remind Meld since it's the first time I'm doing it. Um, oh, it doesn't tell you anything in terms of tasks involved. It's just like, it. yeah, it literally just says, Oh, it's a, it's a minimum of difficulty of one. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I, I oops, re reading the text, I lied about it being relaxing. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh well. Um, okay, here we go. All right, so, so that is five successes, which means you get a point of momentum back. And I'm going to offer you a interesting, perhaps sort of, what's the expression? Uh, complication in a way, but let me describe how the mind milk goes first. So you, of course, do the my mind, your mind, my thoughts to your thoughts thing with the fingers on her template where you know the pressure points are. And you do begin to sort of have that mind to mind melding where you're sharing experiences, sharing uh, viewpoints, things of that nature. But for you specifically, Sobak, you're probably getting more than what you're giving. And by that, I mean, you're seeing a lot of memories, a lot of experiences that Tomler has had and a few really stick out to you. Um, the first is the uh, the image or the observation that the Pochai children are literally being dragged out of their homes by these lizard-like creatures who you assume are the Modar. Um, but they are being dragged out of their homes and put on carts and more or less carted off to do serving, sacrificing, whatever it is the Modar want to do of them. And it reminds you, well, maybe not you specifically because you're a Vulcan, but if you were a human, this would be very similar to how slavery went down on Earth. So you're sort of getting that um, momentous observation, the experience of living through that. Yeah, and the I other during, thing during oh, during the ahead. process too, just to, to set the scene a little bit, I want I want Sovak to be really physically grappling with what he's with what he's seeing and what he's experiencing during this, especially in that bit. Mm -hmm. And I would say it actually gets worse um, if that's even possible. And I will just say for sake of argument that if you're sensitive to triggers such as um, abuse or things like that, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I do want to be safe for the viewers and for anyone, you know, listening. Um, basically the next memory you see keeping it vague is you see that Tomalor was forced to watch as someone very close to them was experimented on. Again, not going to go into detail, mm -hmm. but it was another mm -hmm. one of those experiences where the Modar were definitely the oppressing force, and it's very clear that the Pochai are not living a very happy life. And what I mean by complication is I would actually say that if you challenge your value that violence is always a last resort or not challenge the value if you use that value in a negative way meaning that after seeing all this you actually think that violence is warranted here i will give you a point of determination i but think it's key... totally from 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 a narrative standpoint that totally makes sense and i'm totally down for for doing that but just mechanically, I don't know what I would do with that second point of determination now in this session. I mean, you would just save it. You could use that determination next session, three sessions okay. from now. You would just need to make a note of it. Yeah. Then, then um, I would I would do the I would redo the value. I would challenge that value. Basically, the violence is always a last resort, um, mm -hmm. and come up with a text a little bit later, something along the lines of, you know, there being exceptions to that. Mm -hmm. That there are certain cases when violence is called for, based on his perspective change a little bit from what he's learned from. Uh, from Tom mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's certainly fair. And I think so, physically, it's taking its toll on him too. Like he's he's not doing the like Seric thing where he's like bawling and 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 crying <laughs> and, and stuff like that. But he's his face is turning red. He's struggling to keep his eyes closed. He's like visibly shaking. 
mm-hmm. she's doing this and I'm sure she's doing fine. But yeah, she is not really showing any sort of response to what you're doing. Amanda, do you need do acquire medical attention? Uh, he he doesn't hear you, so he just keeps doing his thing. Yeah. But I would say the mind melt does eventually stop and then you could ask him and be like, it's commander, yeah. is everything all right? That sort of thing. Uh yeah, if then if we're done with the mind meld, then that's what happens. So so he'll um actually uh, I can also spend a point of momentum during it to get some more information somehow. Is there any sort of insight that that she can I use that to make like determine what she took away from the experience? Yes, I would say by spending the point of momentum that you would know that she has uh, temporarily or otherwise sort of gained that logical understanding of the Vulcan uh, mind but that maybe isn't going to change her viewpoint drastically. Interestingly, I think what it's going to do is give her further ways to argue with you. So maybe in a way, this mind melt has actually backfired on what you were hoping. Now now, now she's a Tellarite. Great, she can argue. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Yeah, then then, uh, Sovak breaks the mind meld, and he... um, he 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 doesn't fall onto the onto the onto the deck, but he has to support himself now. He's very very out of it. I I, I come support. To, I'll come support Sovak then. Yeah, uh, Commander. He, he doesn't say com- no. Commander, I think we should probably take. I think I should probably take you to Med Bay at least, so that we'll, even if it's a mild sense of fatigue, at least make sure that everything's all right with you. I think that makes sense, Lieutenant. Thank you, and. On on his way out, like I imagine, he's being supported by by Talkath walking to the door. Uh, Sovak has to walk past the captain, and as he does so, like he's he's ragged, he's like dragging his feet, and he stops next to the captain and looks him in the eye and puts his hand on his shoulder and just says, "I understand," and uh, leaves it at that, and then he he goes away. All right. So by my count, that leaves uh, Mister Decca alone. Well, relatively alone with Tomalor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the security forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you describe this experience, Tarnalar? Interesting. I feel like my mind is a bit more clear. Did you understand in any way why we cannot give you technology? I do. However, I also now see connections where there weren't before. As in? Well, you have your security officer, Thakaner, working on ways to communicate how to revolutionize peacefully. But how would that work? They are still going to experiment on me no matter what happens if you send me back. And you say it's up to this, you know, like it's our problem to figure out based on what I now understand about your prime directive. But at the same time, you are essentially wiping your hands clean of the situation by sending me back. Yes, but this is not our situation to solve. We empathize with your people's situation and heck, we we will support you with means of revolutionizing peacefully and we perhaps can come back someday to grant you a more open alliance between the Federation and the people from, and the Pochai. But at the moment, as it stands, we cannot give you, we cannot give you technology. We cannot find fighter battles for you. For you. We have done that in, in the past and it has brought nothing but sorrow. Which ironically brings me to a point that I've just learned from your commander. Even providing me with peaceful ways to upheaval society is a gross violation of your prime directive. It is. It is. 
In fact, I would say that the only logical solution here is to push me out an airlock. Because neither of us will budge. And that's what I hope from you. I hope that you would see this situation and understand it. We can try to make you look different and bypass the raiders. Somehow we put you on the surface of your planet next to a crowded city somehow. And you try to dodge the modar. And from there, you try to articulate your revolution with the knowledge we provide you. In essence, again, wiping your hands clean of the situation. From what I understand, the Federation values the right to choose in a society and that how society should take its own course. But I would ask you, Captain, if it were your children, your mothers, your fathers, your brothers, your sisters, that were being dragged out onto the streets, would you be okay with any of this? Of course not. Of course not. I would be there standing and making a stand. Then you understand but why I need weapons. There's more than just weapons. Revolutionalizing is a posture. The revolutions that have been most successful in the history of humankind had not been by the hand by the hands of soldiers. And I think as that conversation goes on, we're actually going to go to sick bay where uh, Sovak and Talkath, you guys have uh, walked in. And uh, if you don't mind talking to yourself a little bit there, uh, Mr. Sovak, uh, yeah, uh, Okoro is uh, ready to treat you. Does I anybody can, want I to can. play Okoro? Yeah, I can try. Just... <laughs> okay. Uh, unless they kind of really want to. He's he's a blank slate. Do with him what you want. <laughs> we'll all add uh, parts to his personality as we all play him. Mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead, then, uh, uh, Doctor, uh, could you please have a quick look over Sovak here? I believe the mind meld may have done a little bit more damage than we than I will like. Maybe just severe exertion, but just a quick once over. <sighs> okay, okay, yes. Uh, are you okay, Commander? What? How, so, how... go ahead. Sorry. How many fingers? How many? How many fingers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's gonna just, <laughs> just so so figures take camera. It's, it's perfectly fine. Uh, Sovak leans up against a bio bed. He's not laying down, but he's he is trying to support himself against it, and he um he's still sort of out of it, and he says. The mind meld did not proceed as, as I had planned, and he seems to have like trouble forming words, and he's like holding the side of his head because he has a headache. Well, I'm sure no one would plan this, and he's. Mm -hmm. Actually, could I try to diagnose him? Ah, uh, yeah. If you want to make it an actual roll, uh, it would be a reason medicine difficulty of zero. Hey, two uh, momentum, geez. you're up to four. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're just basically seeing that his neurotransmitter levels are hyperactive at the moment, which is probably why he has the headache. Um, you're also seeing that there is the increase of... I forget the actual name of the hormone, but basically the stress hormone, there's an elevated level of that. The, it's one of those things where scanning him, he's going to be physically fine, but mentally you're seeing a lot of indications that maybe would lead to uh, some form of PTSD if left untreated. Mm -hmm. uh, <sighs> well, 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 Commander, physically you look okay, but you might need to, we might need to talk to ship counselor about what you had just experienced. Otherwise it could lead to something more drastic down the line. Sovak uh, tries to tries to refuse it, but it maybe doesn't come out so politely. He says, "No, my uh, my my people have ways of dealing with this. I will be fine. I just uh... I, I would highly recommend that you talk to someone because 
with the way things are going, right? With the way things are going in your with your own brain right now. The lieutenant is right, Commander. I believe. <laughs> if you're such a stickler for the rules, I can I, I can order it. You know, the chief medical officer has their power. She's uh, so uh, out of character. Uh, Tom mm-hmm. Allure is. If we we know she's pretty like stubborn and gruff. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say that that maybe the effects haven't completely worn off, and Sovak is is demonstrating that right now. He says, "No, I will be fine. I just need some rest and some water, and to to digest what I just went through." Then you'll do this in sick bay, and that is a medical order, Lieutenant Commander. <laughs> and Sovak <laughs> Sovak crosses his arms like she did earlier, <laughs> and and uh, looks away a little bit. And, so just uh, water then. I'll, I'll get some water and prepare the medicine and just administer on the stubborn Vulcan. Thank you, Doctor. And uh, Sovak turns or looks up to to Lieutenant Talkath and says, uh, he, he he looks at him for a minute and then he he's he apologizes for his um, his behavior and says, I'm sorry, this is a very stressful moment for me. Uh, I've seen things, and she has seen things that that I did not expect, and that make this um, this much more difficult to deal with. I do believe that she is right to to request assistance, even if I don't necessarily agree that uh, what form that that assistance should take. But she does so have what a point. Then? We 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 start providing weapons for rebels. I didn't say that, Doctor. I'm just saying this is a new perspective that it will take me some time to to deal with. The fact that uh, there may be a warranted case here. This isn't just a simple matter of of a subservient class. This is slavery in its in its rawest form that uh, we haven't experienced in centuries. The doctor will just mutter under his breath the oath of Hippocrates: "Do no harm." Blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And as that's taking place, we're actually going to go back to the shuttle bay. Uh, Captain, you haven't really gotten anywhere, or at least anywhere meaningful, uh, but Thakaner has arrived with the report he was preparing. Captain? <sighs> Lieutenant, have you prepared that report? Well, there's some... Uh... It's as complete as I can get it. Uh, I mean, if I had a week, I'd still probably have about as much just because it's it's a mess. Let's err on the side of caution. The amount of information we're giving is probably already enough. So, Tom Miller, as you can see here, and I'm going to get the pad, we have... I have really nice compilation of tactics tactics and rebel how how to revolutionize peacefully mm-hmm. and i believe our good lieutenant can provide you with a lesson on this if needed so are you willing to accept our offer and go back to your planet with a different appearance and this information in your hand she doesn't say anything, but she does motion for the pad. Now, now, let's not be hasty. As I said, and I point to Lieutenant, he would be willing to give you a lesson first. And I guess she just sort of looks between the two of you, not really sure what to say at this point. Now you just have to say a yes or no. Do you accept this information in exchange to peaceful return to your society? And we hope that you manage to, to overtake the Modar. I would like to see the information to make sure that you haven't just quoted Shakespeare or some author that was in Silvok's mind. <laughs> uh, at that, uh, the canner would speak up, be like, I know you don't know me, but this was mostly my idea, and I take pride in my ability to gather information and relay it. 
So that information is as accurate as I can make it. Then I would be happy to perhaps acquiesce to your demand. And she still motions for the pad. And I'll deliver the pad to the hand of the Lieutenant Takaner and say, please, teacher. Okay. I'm sorry, Tumblr. We cannot have you get, give you our information or technology in either way. Oh, okay. I was completely misunderstanding that as a player. <laughs> okay. Um, so what do I need to do? Well, that's the thing here. And I think we need to maybe, because there is a bit of a disconnect here. My understanding was this report was something that she could take and then look up, um, you know, data on something. It would be basically be giving like uh, a medieval era person um, a tablet or something of that nature and saying, hey, you know, this will run for X amount of time. It has Y information on it. Um, you know, use it as you see fit. But it's not going to be something that would damage society, at least in my mind. Um, oh, it yeah. I thought, I thought it was actually handing uh, going to be handing her a book. That, I would say, is definitely going to take a lot more time than it would to be getting her a pad, is what I would say. Okay. Um, if you want to make a book, you can. But it's one of those things where, especially in the TOS era, that the rudimentary nature of the... Uh, pad is, you know, maybe there's a disconnect there between where the prime directive starts and ends, but I, I can think of at least a few episodes where, uh, Kirk and Spock literally just said, here you go, kind of a thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I was afraid that the pad would be like a huge violation and... I mean, to put it bluntly, this whole mission is a huge violation. <laughs> so what's another kind of a thing? Yeah, when, when, when this is trying to mitigate the damage by having her not reveal the information. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, a pad in the TOS area is like a really basic Kindle, pretty much. like Exactly, yeah. E-paper thing. So it's not something that's going to revolutionize society or anything. Okay, yeah, then I'm, I'm, I'm less stressed now. I was thinking a computer, and she can do whatever she, she needs with the computer. And Oh, no, a pad is literally just, it's literally just the information that's on there that was downloaded on there, as far as I've ever understood. Yeah, in the TOS era, it is literally just a playback device. If this was TNG, then yes, yeah, she could interface with your computer. But this is TOS era, so no danger of that here. Then I am very sorry. I will extend the pad to her. All righty. And she just starts right reading through it. I'm sure uh, the canner will uh, will like point out uh, like things that are more similar to uh, what he will leave her situation to be. Like, oh, uh, if you look at this section in this part of the history. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they uh, they read on through it, and uh, yeah. Chad brought up, uh, apparently she focuses on the uh, nuclear weapons policy of Gandhi. Because, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, she kind of reads it through. And uh, if left to her own devices, she will just continue to read. Um, so this is kind of that point in the episode where I ask, she said she's agreed. Do you send her back as she is? Do you, you know, what's, I, I'm not sure, you know, I thought the agreement the, was we send her back after the medical uh, procedure so that she can hide in plain sight. Right, 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 right. And to your knowledge, to what she's saying, she's okay with that. Or at least has indicated that she's okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then this, it's just a matter of <clears throat> Captain to Sick Bay. Dr. Mm -hmm. Namdi, are you there? This is the doctor. What's up, Captain? We got consent. Uh, consent for? Uh, don't say lobotomy. Don't say lobotomy. Uh, that was never an option, doctor. <laughs> we need you to perform plastic surgery on her. She needs to look different. Can do. That should be no problem. Just uh, have her make a list of things she'd like to change about herself, and we can accommodate. I. 
I believe you can decide that for possibly. As you wish. All right. Uh, Lieutenant Takaner, can you maybe figure out a way for us to stealthily return and back to her people? Uh, that would require a bit of uh, back and forth between Tom and Lord and myself on areas that would be least noticed or an area that is abandoned to her knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I believe we can try to work on that regard. Perhaps mm -hmm. use the long grain sensors and try to move on towards the planet. Right. right. The situation is somewhat somewhat handled. So if I understand where all this is going, she's gonna get plastic surgery, you'll beam her down somewhere, and then you'll mm -hmm. go on your merry way, more or less. Yeah. Uh obviously I do think that we should leave some kind of uh, monitoring system in the system so that we can see, oh no, they've completely gone nuclear on themselves and they have wiped themselves out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would so, be so one of the know. things where you would just say, hey, Starfleet, we need you to monitor this planet kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. It's very volatile uh, yes. currently. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. better that, that it is passing ships than like a beacon that stays here and they can possibly get to it. Right, right, right. All right, well, um, honestly, I think we've kind of reached the end of this adventure then because you have a plan forward. Uh, you have found at least a solution of some sort. Um, so I think the final scene is that we sort of go to an image of the planet uh, with Tomalor being beamed into some inconspicuous alleyway in a major city. And they sort of hide the pad uh, with a smile as they walk out into the crowds and get lost. And I'm going to spend some threat to do this. As the gang good flies away and returns to its own mission, we see an empty spot in the torpedo room where a torpedo should have been. Oh no. And that's where, where did, we're going to end the session. Where did she hide that torpedo? <laughs> oh. If she was being oh god. And oh, god. I, I, since we're at the end of the the session, I'll tell you what happened. So it was one of those things where part of the mind meld was I gave her one of Sovok's focuses and one of his focuses is Starfleet protocol. So she knew exactly how to not only mask the fact that she was transported with a torpedo somewhere, but that you're not going to find that that torpedo is missing. Probably not ever, actually. Like, maybe she went to the point that she completely wrote that torpedo out of the inventory logs. How did she gain access to that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was pretty sure that she, Damn. like, number one, she would have been uh, monitored the entire time. Even in med, even in sick bed, there'd be guards watching. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, even if they had to go to female guards, which I'm pretty sure there would be, mm -hmm. so to, to protect her privacy. Um, how how did she gain access to the computers to be able to do that? I think yeah, the I'm coding is... you, the kind of. If if Sovak could have done it, if he was clever enough to do it, if he wanted to, then she probably would have been able to too. I think is the implication. Right. That is that is sort of what I'm implying here is that because Sovak knew so much, she used Sovak's knowledge against you. Uh, sorry, out of curiosity, are we off stream yet? Or uh, no, not we're not off stream yet. Um, okay. okay. But uh, I can be. Uh, so yeah, that was sort of the end of this two parter. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, this is where I'm going to cut the stream. So Twitch YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you later. Bye stream. See ya.